Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, we are waiting for word on the final farewell for Aretha Franklin. It is expected to be a huge event. Meantime, fans are paying tribute to the Queen of Soul outside the new Bethel Baptist Church. Fans and people who knew her have been stopping at the church where she started singing in the church choir. Some say it gives them some comfort to share their love for Aretha with each other. The city of Detroit will be working with Franklin's family to make the celebration of her life a world-class event. Nothing is set in stone at this point, but we have heard the farewell could spread over a few days. There could be a public viewing and maybe even a tribute concert. That all takes a lot of planning, and we will keep you posted as details come together. And as we mentioned, Aretha fans are still showing up at the new Bethel Baptist Church. They've been dropping up balloons and candles and other memorabilia. Local force Larry Spruill is live at the church this afternoon, and there has been a lot of activity for a second day in a row. Good afternoon, Karen. A lot of people have stopped by New Bethel Church. They say this is where they can feel close to the Queen of Soul. Now, all day people have been coming out here, dropping off balloons and different types of Aretha memorabilia. Now, I spoke to one guy. He has a collection, an Aretha Franklin collection that is quite impressive. You got the Black Stars magazine, which was in 19... 79. In the Jet Magazine, highlighting the Queen of Soul, but DJ Jumper's Queen of Soul collection is way more than just magazines. That's double L, 30 songs on there. Then we got the Pink Cadillac, who don't remember that? That question stumped me because this one of a kind collection started before I was born, but DJ Jumper tells me, you know what I'm saying? His collection is like wine, it just gets better over time. Aretha, Temptation, somebody like that, yeah. You just said, give it to him. We got a new CD, I buy it. So whenever Aretha has something new. I bought it. That's the, I ain't had to hear it. That's the way it was. But one thing he had to check out in person. Now this is it. Reverend C.L. Franklin recorded right here at New Baptist Baptist Church. Aretha sung her first gospel solo inside New Bethel Baptist Church. It's the same church her dad pastored. Friday, many came out to celebrate the life of Aretha Franklin. She died Thursday from pancreatic cancer. Friday, the family released early funeral arrangements for Aretha Franklin. Local 4 learned the final show for the Queen will be four days of events. Her body will lie in repose for two days inside the rotunda of the Charles Wright Museum. It will be open to the public. Her funeral will be at Greater Grace Temple on Seven Mile, but that's only for close friends and family. There are plans of a musical tribute with major recording artists. The venue is still being decided at this point, but you can be sure it will be a celebration fit for the Queen. DJ Jumper tells me that's the only way for the Queen of Soul. So a lot of people are going to come from out of town. And a lot of people will be here in Detroit for that celebration. Now, it's no secret, Aretha Franklin's music has spread across the world and has affected anybody, black, white, young, and old. Coming up tonight at six, I'll introduce you to four young girls who tells me they have their own experience of the queen of soul. We're live on the West Side tonight. Larry and you know, Larry, I think that is so important because we do talk about the people who remembered her and grew up with her, but there is a younger generation that really does respect her music and really honors her. Yeah, you know, when you think about it, like like myself, like I didn't get a chance to meet the Queen of Soul, but I grew up with her music. My parents played her music, so the younger generation is also experiencing the Queen of Soul for themselves. All right, Larry, thank you so much. We'll check back with you at five. Meantime, celebrity tributes to the Queen of Soul continue to pour in this afternoon. Many longtime friends are sharing what they remember about her. One common theme: her music broke barriers. They wanted to keep us right in the R&B section, you know, because we were African-American and, and those kind of things. You know, Aretha didn't care. She did her music, but her music had some magic to it because it just went and swept everybody. I don't care what color you were or where you lived or anything like that. And that's why she became the icon that she became. So true. The tributes still trending on Twitter. Jennifer Lopez wrote, quote, I don't know of an artist alive today who has not been inspired by Aretha Franklin. She gave voice to the most important declaration for women of our time, and it still stands today. Respect. 
And have you seen this one from Lady Gaga? She wrote, what beautiful music and vocal artistry you gave to the world. You are a legend and your soul will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, angel of music. And don't forget, we do have a special Aretha page on clickondetroit.com. You can see highlights from her career and share your own personal tributes. Well, it is a mess out there, and it looks like things are even going to get worse before they get better. Let's bring in Ben on what we can expect for the next few hours. It's uh, quite rainy. Yeah, Karen, it looks like the worst of it is going to be coming towards the end of that drive home. Even though most of us are dry right now, that last of those east side downpours are starting to pour into uh, Ontario and parts of Windsor. But we're keeping an eye on these thunderstorms down here in Coldwater and Hillsdale County, and they're crawling at about five, six miles an hour, so they're not moving very fast. Some of that rain has already reached into our south zone, in western Lenawee County, and we expect more of it to stream in as we get through the evening hours tonight. So if you've got plans, expect to see scattered thunderstorms at least through about 6, 7 o'clock. They'll thin but still remain as we get into the late evening hours, and then after 10 o'clock and the sun goes down, we will start drying out. If you've got a busy weekend ahead, let us do the heavy lifting. Take the Weather Forecasters app with you on the uh, local Forecasters app. Download it for free in your app store. Just search WDIV. Karen. Right now, family and friends, colleagues and community members are gathering at the public visitation of fallen Detroit police officer Fadi Shakur. You're looking live right now at the Southfield Funeral Home where the visitation has just begun. That's located on West 12 Mile in Southfield. The visitation goes until 8 o'clock this evening and there will be another visitation tomorrow from 3 until 9 p.m. Officer Shakur served with the Detroit Police Department for just six months before the accident. He was hit by a car while walking to his patrol car after assisting with crowd control and did not survive his injuries. A suspect has been charged. Officer Shakur will be laid to rest on Monday. And we probably don't have to tell you, but this weekend is a very big event. It's the 2018 Woodward Dream Cruise. And if you live along Woodward, oh, you are in the hot zone as classic car lovers have already been cruising Really all week long, the event attracts over 1 million visitors and more than 40,000 muscle cars, street rods, custom collectors, and special interest vehicles. Now it takes place on Woodward Avenue from Ferndale to Pontiac, kick it off officially at 9 a.m. tomorrow and ending at 9 p.m. President Donald Trump is not backing down over yanking the security clearance of a former CIA director. Instead, he's attacking the reputation of John Brennan and threatening to revoke clearance for more intelligence officials. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom with the backlash and the new comments from the president. And there are some, yeah, Karen, 15 former senior intelligence officials all signed a joint letter to the president. They're furious, but the president doesn't seem to be listening to that. The former officials. I, I think that Bruce Orr is a disgrace with his wife, Nellie. For him to be in the Justice Department and to be doing what he did, that is a disgrace. That is disqualifying for Mueller. And Mr. Mueller has a lot of conflicts also. That was uh, actually the president responding to um, uh, something I'm going to get to in a moment. The former officials were calling Trump's revoking of Brennan's clearance, quote, ill-considered and unprecedented. They say it's about stifling free speech, as Brennan has been a very vocal critic of the president. Uh, now the president uh, is threatening to revoke the clearance of Justice Department official Bruce Orr, who the president was just talking about, and his wife, who worked for the firm who produced the infamous Steele dossier. Critics say the president is using his power to undermine the so-called Russia probe. And today, as you heard, the president didn't hold back. We'll have to see how this all plays out in the future. But meantime, special counsel Robert Mueller continues his investigation. Still no word if or when the president might be questioned. Karen, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Jason. Meantime, the jury in the Paul Manafort trial continues to deliberate, but the judge will not release their names. Judge T.S. Ellis says he has received threats and he fears for the juror's safety as well. This afternoon, the jury sent a note to the judge, but there's no immediate word on exactly what that note said. Manafort is on trial for banking and tax fraud. The charges have nothing to do directly with the Russia probe, but Manafort is the president's former campaign chairman. Meantime, President Trump has pulled the plug on his dream of that military parade in Washington. The decision comes after a bitter debate over how much it will cost taxpayers. The president came up with the idea after being invited to a Bastille Day celebration in France. Critics have said any money earmarked for a parade would be better spent caring for veterans. The newest government estimate on costs has swelled to $92 million. The Secretary of Defense did not agree, though, with that number.
whoever told you that is probably uh, smoking something that's legal in my state, but not in most states, okay? <laughs> I'm not dignifying that number with any reply. Okay. Uh, I, I would discount that. Today, the president tweeted, quote, maybe we will do something next year in D.C. when cost comes way down. Now we can buy some more jet fighters. Still ahead, how do you feel about flying to Europe for less than 150 bucks? We will talk about cheap airfares in trending stories. And a warning for dog lovers this afternoon, more and more pets are getting sick in Michigan. What you need to ask your vet in good health. Up first, a wedding warning for brides and grooms. Beware uninvited guests trying to ruin your big day. How one wedding planner saved the day. Coming up.